I remember coming out of a class oh, a while back, and one Encore Learning member said to me, I'm just so mad I didn't get into this class. So for you, he's coming back, and this is class number 3002. Good morning, I'm Charles Hertel. One of the darker chapters in our nation's history is the dispossession of the native inhabitants by European settlers in the 17th to the 19th centuries. This dis disposition, in most cases, did not occur without res violent resistance on the part of the Native Americans. This resistance has long been given the term Indian Wars. In the popular imagination, the name Indian Wars is usually associated with the Indian Wars fought on the Great Plains between 1862 and 1890 when the U.S. Cavalry battled the horse Indians of the Plains across the American West. The names Sitting Bull, Crazy Horse, Geronimo, and General Custer of Last Stand fame are known to most Americans. This knowledge, though, is more thanks to Hollywood uh, than to real history. The wars against the Plains Indians, however glorious, were really just the last gasps of an aboriginal culture against what was already an industrial superpower, supported by fossil fuels, steam power, railways, the telegraph, and mass production. This course, however, deals with the Indian Wars in the Old Northwest from 1754 to 1794. The Old Northwest was the geographical area bounded by the Allegheny Mountains in the east, the Ohio River Valley in the south, the Great Lakes in the north, and extending out to the Mississippi River. The forest Indians who lived in the Old Northwest in the later 18th century fought their European and American adversaries under far more advantageous conditions than did their Plains brothers 100 years later. The American forest Indian of the late 18th century had the same weapons and equipment that his white foe had. They were obtained either from the fur trade or furnished by rival European powers or gained from vanquished enemies. The Americans did not yet possess the technological advantages in communication, transportation, and armament that they would have even a few decades later. Everyone walked, rode a horse, or paddled a canoe at the same rate of speed. Sea power, which was a great European advantage, was useless in the forest, and the white man's artillery ineffective, whereas the Indian possessed superior knowledge of the terrain, superior tactical mobility, and oftentimes superior tactical application. I have back-ended this course with the involvement of George Washington. We call Washington the father of our country. The Iroquois Indian called Washington the town destroyer. It all depends on your perspective. Washington was the young Virginia lieutenant colonel of provincial troops who commanded the first disastrous military expedition across the Allegheny Mountains in 1754. He was also the president, 40 years later, whose personal choice as army commander finally defeated the Indian Confederation in 1794. 
In the intervening years, Washington was heavily involved in land speculation and investment in Western lands, i.e., Indian lands. And he was closely identified, Washington that is, with two resounding defeats inflicted upon regular armies, one British, one American, by the Indians of the Old Northwest. Braddock's defeat in 1755, in which Washington was a personal participant, and Sinclair's defeat in 1790, in which Washington was a major planner and motivator. Now, the late 18th century was the last time native resistance posed a truly viable threat to the expansion of Anglo-American civilization in the present U.S. This course will examine the reasons for and nature of that resistance and show that the ultimate triumph of American arms was a very close matter indeed. In the process, if you take the course, I think we'll not only develop admiration for the skill and tenacity of Indian resistance to American encroachment, but we'll also become acquainted with some fascinating characters, such as the Half King, Pontiac, Henry Bouquet, Cornstalk, Andrew Lewis, Blue Jacket, Joseph Bryant, Little Turtle, and Mad Anthony White. Let me give you a caveat. This is essentially the same course that I taught uh, in spring of 2019, but I hope I see you. We are pleased to welcome a new instructor, Ellie Kluge, who will be teaching a new five-session course on Reconstruction in Post-Civil War America. The, Ellie will lead the class in a study which begins with the arrival of African